Great. So today we are going to start transitioning to our more useful version, more, more useful model, which is where we take the energy equation, p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz out is equal to p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz in. We divide everything by g. And we add what we call H pump plus some of all of our H losses. Losses. And our goal for today is to get a, um, an estimate for what the H losses looks like for laminar flow. And what we will see is we'll get a um, we'll get a repeatable like uh, term that has a V squared over two G times something that we will use to uh, model all of our losses. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is write down our current model for fully developed laminar flow. And this Q is equal to pi times delta P times D to the fourth divided by 128 mu times L. And let's do um, some rearranging of this. Uh, Yeah, let's do some rearranging of this. So uh, we're going to first say that Q is equal to V times, um, so this is equation one, we're gonna call this equation two. Q is equal to V times A, which is equal to V times pi D squared divided by four. Um, cool. So uh, one plus two into three, and with three, we get um, we get that v times pi d squared over four is equal to pi delta p d to the fourth divided by 100, 128 mu times l. And now we can do some simplification. This becomes 32. Pi's cancel out. Two of the d's cancel out. Great. And remember, we're we're shooting for something that looks like this, right? We have a delta p here, so um, let's start rearranging this and figuring out what we can do. So we're going to take three into four, and we're going to have we're going to get delta p by itself on one side. So we have a delta p is equal to um, thirty-two v divided by d squared um, times mu times L, um, and then on the right, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. So um, to in order to get this into something more, like I said, something more akin to what we're used to, we're going to divide both sides by one half rho V squared. And what's gonna be nice about that is um, first of all, this V is going to cancel out. This is going to stay over here for now. Um, but this V is going to cancel out over here. At least one half will cancel out. But this V is going to actually we're going to uh, we're going to leave that one half in. Sorry, one half, one half. So uh, this V is going to cancel out with this V, and we get a um, Rho V, Rho V D over mu, and that should look familiar. And we're going to pull those out and turn those into a Reynolds number. So we're going to go from four to five, delta P over one half Rho V squared is equal to, the one half comes up here, makes us a 64 times one over um, the Reynolds number. And what's left is an times an L over D. Great. So um, we're going to rearrange this a little bit more. We're going to take our uh, row V squared and put it, uh, leave our row on this side, leave our row on the delta P side. And we're going to divide both sides by one over G. And the result is from five to six, we get that, 
um, delta P over rho G is equal to 64 over the Reynolds number times L over D times, remember the V squared and the one half are coming over to this other side, we get a V squared over 2G. And this is tremendously useful because um, now this is our head loss major, call it head, major head loss, but head loss major um, for fully developed viscous flow. And what's useful about this is that it turns out fully developed flow follows a repeatable pattern. We end up getting that we have some constant, which we call the friction factor, times L over D, which is our length of our pipe, times the diameter of our pipe, times V squared, which is the average velocity, divided by 2G. Um, and this is equal to our head loss major. So this friction factor is equal to 64 over the Reynolds number. So F equals the friction factor, which is um, F equals 64 over the Reynolds number for fully developed laminar flow which if you remember only works for uh, Reynolds numbers less than about 2100, right? Transitional flow is really wonky. And then above 4000, we can use several different tools for modeling our friction factor, which we, which we will see. Um, and What's interesting about this friction factor is we can do a dimensional analysis with it. So we're going to say that our system here, we're going to write down all of our variables. Zero is equal to some function of, well, we have delta P. We have, uh, if, we, if we go back up to this equation up here with our, our laminar flow in our pipes, we have delta P, we have um, V, D, mu, we have our length of our pipe, and I'm going to add one more thing in here, which is that it's equal to, we have our roughness of our pipe. This is where experience comes in. Um, and if we do it, the next step in dimensional analysis, which we write out all of our units, we have delta P, B, D, mu, L, and E. Uh, delta P is going to be mass divided by length times time squared. This is length per time. This is a length, this is a mass per length time. And we have our length is obviously a length and our roughness is a length, okay? So um, I'm gonna do now figure out, we, okay, so now we figure out how many pi groups we have. So we have, um, we have six uh, physical variables. And we have three physical dimensions. And so we're gonna get three pi groups. And that also means, by the way, that we have three physical dimensions, we have to pick three repeating parameters. So I'm gonna pick V, D, and mu. Cool. And um, now we, we go and we start doing this. So the, the, what I'm gonna call pi three and pi two, which are gonna be built around our length and our roughness are really easy, right? So pi two is just gonna be equal to our length divided by our diameter. because so that's an easy way to non-dimensionalize the length. It's just to divide by a length. The same thing is gonna be true of our um, roughness. We're gonna have E over D, which is awesome. And um, uh, oh, I forgot. We have to add a density here. God, we never, I always have to, always forget to add a density. So we have to add a density here, and a density, remember, is a mass per length cubed. So actually, shoot, this is four. Sorry, this is still three, but this is seven. So we're gonna end up with four pi groups. Um, pi four, let's start with pi four. Pi four is gonna be equal to our density times our velocity to the A, our diameter to the B and our viscosity to the C. And hopefully you see rho, B, D, and mu, you already know what this is gonna look like. This is gonna be equal to rho, V, D over mu, which is our Reynolds number. 
That's great. Reynolds number showed up. Um, our pressure is a little bit wonky. So our pi one is going to be equal to our delta p times v times v to the a, d to the b, and mu to the c, which is equal to um, mass per length time times length per time to the a power times length to the b power times mass per length time to the c power. And so this is all equal to uh, well, one, right? Everything has to cancel out. So let's do our, all of our equations here, our systems of equations. We have mass, we have zero plus, plus is equal to one plus zero times A plus zero times B plus C. Length, we have zero is equal to negative one. Oh, did I write that down wrong? Yeah, I, I, no, I didn't. Negative one um, plus one times A plus uh, one times B plus negative C. And our time, we have zero is equal to negative, uh, there's a squared there, negative two plus negative one A plus B, zero times B plus negative C. Great, we can solve all these and we find out that our pi one is equal to delta P times um, D over mu times our velocity. Excellent. So um, what we've learned, right, from this is we've learned that our delta P, our pi one, is equal to a delta P D over mu V, and that is equal to some function of our other pi groups, which is our Reynolds number, our length over our distance, and our E over D. And if we draw some inspiration from this equation up here, um, where we know what our head loss is already equal to, we have some friction factor here. We can see that we have our friction factor is equal to um, our V squared over 2G times our L over D times some constant friction factor, which if we take our remaining pi groups, we know that our friction factor is going to be a function of our Reynolds number and our E over D. And indeed, if we do a whole bunch of experiments, we can find that all of our friction factors collapse onto some curves that we can plot over our Reynolds number. And we'll talk about that in the next, next lecture. Um.